What's up guys, Brian back with another video and this is uh, the continuation of our new player guided walkthrough. Last episode we left off uh, sieging some play carts. Um, I would have kept going but obviously that episode was going on pretty long so I wanted to cut it short and then we'll just continue our siege this episode. So um, as you guys see we're still geared up and nothing has changed. I swapped out my stamina items because... I was be being really, really stingy on using my um, stims. And I'm like, well, what the hell was the point of me bringing them if I didn't wasn't going to use them? So I have these on me. These energy drinks I'll actually use. So that bloater needs to go. Nope. I freaking had to jump out the damn car. Got him. All right, so we got a horde here. It's fine. Um, I could literally just kind of lure him this way. And my tower should start lighting him up a little bit. As you guys can see, they're just putting in, putting in that work. And that big group of zombies turns into a not so big group of zombies, right? Yeah, I just didn't want that bloater would have became issues, and that horde I wouldn't even been able to drive through there without severely damaging my car. All right, so let's head right down and take care of this first play cart. Yeah, well, second play card, technically. This other one is in the uh, little shopping plaza down here. Now, with these shopping plazas, you got to be a little careful. They spawn quite a bit of zombies because there's so many different buildings. The Each one of these counts as an individual building. And uh, sometimes when you step into one, this whole entire place will light up like a Christmas tree. And it's just so many zombies will spawn in. All right, so what we're doing is we're just kind of, you know, doing our... Walk around to the area. And as you guys can see, there's a horde up there. Horde back there. Kind of want to see what this horde right here is going to do. So another mistake that I made, um, I brought equipment to take out the play cart, like for, for literally equipment to take out three of them. This was supposed to be play cart number one. This was supposed to be play cart number two. And um, the explosives I have in the trunk was supposed to be for play cart number three. And I ended up fully meleeing the first heart. So I just have to get this done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out three this episode because we have equipment for it. So as you can see, one zombie spawned in here, but you can hear the zombie spawned in next door. Yep, there they are. And I think some might even have spawned down there. There's nothing here that we need. So that zombie's like stuck in a weird spot, so we're gonna move him, execute him out here. Okay, so we do got some hordes around the area that might get called in. Um, definitely take care of this bloater. That horde shouldn't hear the gunshot from over here. They'll hear the bloater though. Okay, so they actually got that horde moving. I might actually burn this one. And once they're burned, we should be able to push in on this heart. We 
We could wait. You honestly, that that's uh, something that you can do in these situations. Just let the horde pass. Uh, we got another enclave that showed up that once. These guys want fuel, so we're gonna definitely hook them up. Okay, I'm coming to meet you. The hell do these guys want? Trouble? We already worked with them. What one zombie left? Okay, so now let's push in and take care of this play card. So this one we're gonna do with the bloater gas. So how it's gonna work is we're gonna fade, we're gonna get it to its first phase using the heavy weapon. Um, and then once we do that, we're gonna be able to just store a firecracker in here and throw the bloater bomb, and that should be it. So we're gonna make that space because I want to get I want to unequip this heavy weapon. Oh, nice grab! So I didn't time a dodge there at all. So they're knocked down. We're gonna get our heavy weapon put away. Let's go with our knife. Alright, so that went better than expect. Well, that actually went worse than expected, but. So, you see that giant horde in there? We're gonna burn that, and uh, that should actually do a lot of damage to the play card. So, that's already phase two. There's no point in wasting a bloater bomb on that. I actually might just chuck a T TNT in there. And, or actually, you know what? We'll grab that pipe bomb. Chuck that in there, and we might call it good. This play card can't yep. hurt us anymore. It feels so good to reclaim some territory like this. Yeah, there was no point in going full bloater bomb at that point because the, the horde built up so much. Um, it wasn't worth wasting. Now, the bloater bombs, like I said, those are the gas grenades are so good. Um, I hear people bad mouthing the army, calling them cowards. Nice. The army I know, the soldiers I served with, they would never just leave people behind. But until we understand what really happened, know that Red Talon is here for you. Now. Um, definitely, t you know, use your bloater b bombs sparingly, especially if you don't have a way to craft them. If you don't have to use them, don't. In that situation, like I said, once I threw that fire, I could have threw the bloater bomb and just killed the play card in one shot, but, uh, we'll just bloater bomb this the next one. And then we're gonna head up and trade this fuel that we actually just got out of that play cart to that enclave. So, so far we're at a point now where we're not getting ferals on every play cart. Eventually you will get to a point when you're hitting play carts and ferals start showing up. So, let's see how if these zombies pursue all the way up here. We're going to deal with them anyway. They're kind of close. Barrel actually sounded pretty close. So let's uh get this building lit up like a Christmas tree. Get everybody spawned in.
Okay, so I popped a stam item. We're going to literally run up. Now, I'm going to try to do this super quick. All right, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it. As soon as it starts phasing, I'm literally going to run back. I'm going to have my firecrackers equipped. I'm going to run back here, throw the firecracker, and then throw the bloater grenade before um, we're not even going to leave the building. You, you, I'll show you how I'll do it. So I know it's two hits. All right? Literally run back here. Firecracker. Let those go off. Load a bomb. Yep. As you guys see, it nuked everything before it even had a chance. So now that that nuked all the zombies around, let's go around and get all the plague samples. Yeah, so that's the good thing about bloater gas is it's very, very fast at killing the plague hearts. So in that like tight time right there where I was like, you know, I want to just do it really, really quickly. Uh, bloater gas works out super duper good. All right, let me actually see about just fully clearing this place. This place seems safe for now. Um, now, this is actually a grocery store and we actually probably get a, uh, a bag of food out of here, but got a bag of food out of there. Samples and like I said, we're gonna come back around and we're gonna do um We're gonna loot all these areas anyways right now. I don't want to fill up on plague heart loot should be more careful. But we are gonna go give this to that enclave 16 plague samples guys 16 that is insane All right, I'll be there with you before you know it So we're gonna drop fuel off to them and then we'll talk to these guys, see what they want. We'll swing by base, drop off this extra gear and equipment. I would swap survivors, but I don't want to risk um, timing out any of these missions. And there they go. Yep, see. I, I had a feeling that that was, that was getting close to timing out. It's not over yet. We still have a chance to get there, but I don't really want to waste too much time. So we're just going to literally drop the stuff off, grab a gas can. Oh, hey. You're looking good today. Thank you. And let's head back out. Keep the gas in the trunk. Hold down the fort, peeps. So resource-wise, we're doing amazing. Uh, we got some plague hearts killed. Now we're going to set up an outpost in that town. And we should be able to loot. without, uh, At least without plague threat. You know what I mean? We're still going to have zombies. Zombie threat. But the, the threat of the blood plague has been reduced in, in our area that we're operating in. But yeah, guys, I'm really enjoying this playthrough. Like I said, um, difficulty-wise, it, it, it's it's a nice blend. You know, I, I, I'm, we got that the zombie difficulty isn't that insane. You know, lethal zone craziness, but with the way the loot is and still having to go out and stuff like that, I don't. I, I know a lot of you guys in the comments are telling me how much you guys are also enjoying playing on the higher map difficulty, but the lower zombie difficulty. And I just feel like it is a very good combination. And uh, I'm actually having a lot of fun with this um, this setup. I'm actually genuinely, genuinely surprised at the standard zone zombie difficulty. There's a, a decent amount of them. Okay, so let's get in here. All right, so we'll give them this fuel. Thanks, I appreciate it. That should make them allies with us, right? Yeah, yeah. So they're now providing Fight Club health and fighting XP. Why do I feel like we have like another enclave that's giving us the same thing? What are they giving us? Uh, we're getting rooftop sniper from them. They're friendly. 
Caravans, fuel efficiency bonus. That's awesome, actually. Uh, they're giving us the medical. Okay, so maybe we're not getting that. Yeah, we got some pretty decent uh, survivor bonus. Let's see what these guys have for sale. Okay, let's see what you've got. All right. New day, new items. Oh, they got a bolt crafting toolkit. Or yeah, so I might. Uh, like I said, we're we're on the lookout for a mechanics skill book. That's actually something that we're gonna put a little bit of effort into trying to find. If not, we're actually gonna have to go and claim an outpost to get one. And I'm not exactly sure what outposts give um, mechanic books. Gardening, utilities, utilities, craftsmanship. Okay, gas stations. Okay, too easy. Swing down, see what this other enclave wants. I don't remember what this mission is. They're just asking me to talk to them about something. I don't remember what it was exactly. I feel we got a, uh, and that's the thing is just have a well mixed, you know, diverse day. Killing, killing plague hearts during the day, you know, working with your allies at, you know, just. Hey. Don't be gone for too long. How do you guys want? Have you met your other neighbors yet? They seem friendly enough, I suppose. I'm glad you could help. To Patrick, the leader of the Cleavers. Where are they located? Okay, so they are down in Prescott. They we're really going to have quite a few um, friends around here. So let's see what they have for sale. How about we see what we've got? All right. Okay, so this right here. Comfy chair, guys. We definitely want to grab this. This will help us with... Um, Morale. You can install this in one of your facilities, like a bed or something like that. Throw a or I don't, yeah, I think level two beds can have it. Yeah. So you need to have a level two level two beds. Well, we can just put a comfy chair anywhere. I can put it in freaking here if I want. Um, you install the comfy chair and it gives you a nice little morale bonus. Throw that in a car, and they're not easy to get your hands on, so. go down to Prescott. It's going to be a hell of a drive. Uh, we can actually... Let's fuel up right now. It's better to fuel up now. I mean, we probably could have drove all the way down there. But let's fuel up now. Oh, we missed the part two of the uh, ant proper mission. It should come back eventually. Yeah, so we're going to go on an escapade to try to find, uh, while well, we're in Prescott, there's actually a bookstore down here we're going to hit. I don't know if Providence Ridge has a legitimate library. Now, if you're on another map, libraries are the best place to look for skill books. You can actually get your hands on quite a few of them there. But I don't know if Prescott actually has a library. I know they have a, bu a bookstore down in Prescott, though. Okay, so we got a wandering trader. I'm actually going to peek and see what kind of trader it is. It is a Echo Lab trader. So that is the one that we got the crossbow from. I'm not too uh, concerned with meeting up with them. That's the one that had the repeating crossbow. I said you can sometimes get the biochem from. I don't want to be here any longer than I have to. I mean, I would consider buying a biochem station if they had one for sale. We'll see. Where is that trader, by the way? Up near our base.
Yeah, so getting our hands on a mechanic um, is pretty nice. And I know, uh, maybe some of you guys rolled mechanics right off the bat, which, you know, is also a viable option. Um, but, yeah, getting yourself a mechanic is really, really nice because uh, they, they're the ones that give you the ability to craft toolkits and stuff. And uh, right now we don't have the ability to craft toolkits. I've kind of just been babying my cars and uh, utilizing the toolkits that we've had. Yeah, we've definitely been babying our cars a little bit. So I'm actually going to stop at this bookstore first. Like I said, I just know where this bookstore is because I know the maps very well. But, um, like I said, you can find these by just scouting the maps. By going to, like, the cell towers or the billboards. Okay, so she's starting to get tired. We have been using her for quite a bit. Uh, let's drop this heavy weapon. No reason for us to have that on us. So now we just got to be careful. So, yeah, this actually was named after one of the developer, Joe Swarner. It's uh, named after his wife. It's a little Easter egg they put in the game for him. It's really nice. Okay, so let's see what they got. Oh, toolkit. Nice. Actually, we'll just throw that in the trunk. That will come in handy at some point. This we can actually sell to this enclave when we go meet up with them. And uh, this is kind of like an office. Any of the office type buildings, too, you can also have a chance of finding some books. No more creepers here. So I smashed that down. I know people are coming. Ooh, a lot more people than I ex expected, actually. So since she's getting tired, I am going to kind of just open up the floodgates on this gun. I don't want to risk. Okay, so we're down to 15 bullets. Did about 11 damage to my gun, but um, she's getting tired. And when you get, start getting tired, you don't want to do too many physical exerting activities. Uh, it, it will just make your stamina go down even farther. So, And we're nowhere near getting her back to base yet. And I don't have, an, on or I don't have an outpost in the area to swap her out right now. So we just kind of got to preserve her stamina as much as possible. All right, so we got two things to sell, and I'll keep those chemicals. So no no book out of this area, which is fine. Keep the chems in the trunk. Let's go meet up with this enclave. See if they have a cup of coffee to sell or something. Maybe we can drink that. So co when you get the permanent sleep like that, I don't know if I've went over this in a previous video, but uh, ways you can overcome that is with like shots of espresso or um, cups of coffee. It'll take those Z's away and gives your survivor um, more time for you to play with them. So the cool thing about Prescott, right, is if you guys are in the area and there's just tons of zombies around and, you know, you want to maybe loot that gas station, but there's a million zombies around, what you can do is you can actually shoot the bell. The bell will ring, and it actually lures all the zombies in the area to the bell. And what happens is you can shoot it again. And they'll all eventually just pull up right underneath that bell area if you keep hitting it. Uh, right now, you know, it's standard zone, so their their uh, attention span isn't that great. But, yeah, you can literally lure all the zombies over to that bell by shooting it. See what these guys have or want to talk about. What's up? We just do moved in from another town. You must be our neighbor. Yes. I appreciate it. There pa sure are lots of nice looking folks in this town. I think we'll do just fine here. 
Watch yourself out there, yeah? So let's learn about him. Oh, he is a mechanic. Come in, if you'd like. Uh, by the time I'm able to recruit these guys, though. Oh, scrum certification. That is really good. We're actually probably going to recruit her. What's up? And medicine. Okay, nice. Let's see what they have for sale. What you need? Let's see what we have here. Sure. Bag of food and a heavy weapon. Let's grab that bag of food. Okay, so we're gonna... We're gonna get her home. Uh, on our way back, we'll swing by that trader really quick. Um, I'm gonna sell him the stuff I have in my inventory right now. Actually, in the building uh, that we killed that play cart, we could probably sell them the play cart, some of the play cart loot. Hey guys, I found a few things while I was out. Uh, two Molotovs, two bags of snacks, and a bottle of painkillers. That's, I really appreciate those Molotovs. And uh, as you guys, that, that's. If we increase our morale more, uh, we'll keep getting even better and better stuff. Alright, so we're going to hit this trader now. The reason why, like I said, I'm going back to this Echo Lab trader only to sell stuff and to see if they by chance actually have the biochem station on them. And if they do, I'll, I'll buy it. Um, I think it'll be good for teaching you guys how to use it and uh, get you guys excited and, you know, make sure you guys are on the lookout for it. As you can see, that's our second time just in this playthrough alone that we've gotten that trader, so... Make sure you guys are staying uh, vigilant on your types of traders. You can tell just by hovering over them. It'll tell you if you're looking for an Echo Lab trader. Is anyone out there? I could use a little help. Feral in the area. We got the trader here. Let's see if this feral even pursues. And we have the play cart in here that we can uh, give her the junk loot. That oh no, come here, come here, come here. Hi there, Kayla. Let's see what we have here. Of course. So they, she does have the biochem station. That is insane. Um, so let's sell this stuff. We're actually gonna buy that. That's a lot of stuff. Now, because we spent all of that money right now on that biochem, I want to try to get as much of that influence back as possible. So let's uh, see what we can sell here. Okay, we'll just keep it on us. Uh, out of this play cart. Sell her this. We'll sell her this. Okay, so we're gonna sell her that bandage. Would you like to trade? All right. Sell her the backpack that I was thinking about keeping this metal bat actually. Hmm. Could sell her the AK. Now nah, we might hold on to that AK. We have uh we don't have we have one other 762 weapon. How have you been? Okay, let's see what you've got. All right. All right, let's see what else we can get to sell. Oh, nice. We're actually on our way back home. 
So getting our hands on this biochem station, when I tell you guys it is super duper awesome, this is what allows you to craft those bloater gas grenades that we were using. It also allows you to craft um, scent block, which makes you invisible to the zombies for a, a period of time. Hello. It, it's it's really, really nice. Okay, let's see. One more container in here somewhere. Let's see, I'm just trying to get as much of that little bit of influence back as possible. Let's head out. This place is picked over. Okay. Now what we could do is we could head over to the post office. We could try to, you know, just hit all types of stuff in the area, but um I'm not that hungry for getting influence back. Plus she we got that base siege and she's really getting tired. So I'm actually going to equip the AK on her. Get her set up for base defense. I hope everyone's ready for a long fight. Always makes me feel good to be useful. Okay, so she's got the AK on her. Um, yeah, we're going to swap over to Emily. She has a ton of skills that we need to pick. She also has our little bounty weapon that we got. This thing has a nasty scope on it. So I'm going to show you guys a little trick, too, with this base. Uh, if you do get your hands on a portable generator. Um, let's defend the siege first, though. So this gun is in pretty decent condition still. We're going to polish it up like I showed you guys. Polish it up. Grab our Uzi. I'm actually going to top off the bullets in that, too. Oh, it's already topped. And let's grab stamina items and healing items. Perfect. Now, let's pick our skills really quick. Court cardio. So we go acrobatics or marathon. Uh, we don't have an acrobatics person. Now, acrobatics is pretty good. When you max it out, you get the dodging ability. Um, it pretty much makes them so, like, dodging and stuff takes less stamina from the survivor. So, it, it's it's pretty useful. Uh, wits, we can go with stealth or discipline. So, because we're acrobatics and I feel like we're going to go striking, we're actually going to give her discipline, um, which increases stamina. And we're going to give her striking. So, she'll be, like, a dodgy, blunt weapon. She's she'll be She's good at uh, melee combat, pretty much. With blunt weapons. And we're going to give her... We'll start off with that metal bat. This thing actually seems pretty decent. Actually, I don't know how much better... Yeah, so the breaching hammer is better. But the metal bat's so light. So, striking. Um, it pretty much improves your swings. With the... Um, you swing faster. When you have the blunt weapons your knockdown is way higher and when you have a group of zombies around you what you can do is you unlock what's called the grand slam attack which when you uh whatever your buttons are on if you're on whether on pc or controller um you unlock the grand slam attack which gives you the ability to knock down enemies as soon as you hit them and you can hit multiple because it's like a it's like an aoe swing and everything that you hit with that gets knocked down now you got to be careful because there is that weird pause before so you want to make sure that you time it so no zombies are around you or swinging at you when you time that swing okay so let's see if that trader is still there let's see if there's anything else we want to sell i could sell that um okay so as you guys can see we have uh what you're gonna find these things a pile of weapon remains in the game i haven't really gone over it now when you're not really doing anything like right now 
I haven't been using any of these facilities. Like, we haven't been keeping up on our med my med thing like I've been telling you that we should be. I'm doing a really bad job with that. But um, our workshop isn't doing anything. So while you're away and just kind of doing stuff, you, what you could do is you can actually salvage those weapon remains um, into usable parts. And I'll give you 50 parts. So while, you know, you're not using your facilities, just have that running in the background. It, it really helps. So what I do want to do, though, is I want to use... I want to craft a little bit more fire, but we don't have power installed so while we have our uh what we do have is we have our uh bullets here and i wanted to craft up some bullets for our pistol and we're gonna start running nine mil so what i'm gonna do is actually take the suppressor off of that and we're gonna start running this spk because it counts as a full-blown pistol we'll suppress it has a scope it's a nice nice gun um and what we're gonna do is now both these guns use nine mil i'm just gonna craft up uh probably two batches of nine mil yeah our ammo numbers are good now we're at 147 rounds at nine millimeter we're, we're looking really really good um so if we want to start you know working on that 150 zombie kills we can just start dipping into this. Obviously, it's going to start deteriorating our weapon durability. Uh, so you could, in essence, if you want to make a lot of noise and kind of just draw zombies toward, you can take that suppressor off. But if you kind of just want to passively do it and keep, you know, the amount of zombies you're fighting to a minimum, leave that per suppressor on for sure. But you can also put a break on it, which will um, reduce um, the dur or will help the durability a little bit. So let's see. So we're good on that. Oh, uh, now the other trick I want to show you with the generator. Since we can't use the generator in here right now, um, I mean we could, but what I'm going to show you guys is this. When you move into this base, you have this. Um, it's like a fuel tank watchtower. All right. Now by itself, without anything, it legitimately is just it's just a watchtower. That's it. Doesn't do anything else. Now what you can do is. If you read here, guys, when you connect the pump, you connect it um, with power and you pay 133 parts, you can get 15 fuel from this. Uh, it's a one-time thing. When you turn the power on, you just get that 15 fuel. It, pretty much, you're, you're turning on the power, which is allowing you to drain. It gives you the ability to pretty much siphon everything that's in there out. Now we could use that um, that 15 fuel. So what you what you got to do is because I don't have base power, um, you can install a generator in it. And what that does is once that generator is installed, I can turn it on, and it will allow me to farm up that fuel. Wonderful. Now the only thing is right now I'm already at 16 fuel, which means when I if I get that 15, it's going to bring me up to 31 fuel. And I don't think I have any fuel, extra fuel storage. What is my fuel storage? I can only hold 25 right now. So if I want to, before I do that, I want to make sure that we upgrade our storage. Uh, because if not, we're going to lose all that fuel. So we're going to upgrade our storage once we uh, are finished with one of these. And then we'll drain the fuel out of that. But you don't want to overcap. So we're going to, once, like I said, once we're done with the something we're going to upgrade our storage which will allow us to hold 35 of every resource okay so we had before we end this episode um let's see our resources next episode we're probably gonna go and get our hands on some more uh materials because once i upgrade this storage that's gonna drain uh most of our materials again so we are going to be on the hunt for materials, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. We'll take care of this infestation. And then next episode, we are going to definitely push in this town and do some looting here and maybe even come back up here and do some looting here. So what we're going to do is we'll hit this infestation. We'll come back down and I'm going to get me a food outpost, which 
will probably just be the spoon and cone. And I'm going to upgrade that to level 2. And we won't have to worry about food for a while. If ever again, actually. Let me see. Now, that will even us out on food. Alright, so we're going to grab some fire to deal with that infestation. Grab some of these mollies. So it seems like ferals are starting to show up a little more frequent. Why am I coming here? I didn't mark the infestation on the map. Okay, so as we see, I got a group here. I know I'm going to drag them in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them out before we even get up there. I'm on so as you guys see, you got to time that swing or you'll get hit. But yeah, it's an automatic knockdown and it's a it hits groups. So like these guys, we could dodge through. Yeah, now that's what I was saying. The problem with it is you got to you got to time it. Nice. Yeah, once you start getting striking, your knockdown goes through the roof. But yeah, it's that 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 uh spin attack, like I said, it's a little finicky. You definitely gotta get it timed right. I actually probably get more accurate shots with this uh handgun. I don't see the screamer. I was just trying to get eyes on the screamer. Okay, so they're all on the side of the house. Nice. Easy enough. While we're up here, let's see what the shed is. Materials. So while we're here, we know we're going to need materials. Shed is literally right here. Let's just grab these mats before heading down and getting that outpost. Looking good. No more Zeds here. I'm not interested in too many other items. I mean, we could fill up right now because I'm about to go claim an outpost. And we could just dump, but... uh. Yeah, we got we got some space. Let's see what else we can grab from in here. So next episode, we're kind of just gonna be chilling, um, and doing a lot of looting. It's not gonna be the most eventful thing, but kind of give me a chance to just sit back and chill and just talk to you guys about whatever comes to mind. Well, we got some more of those weapon remains we could break down. Drop these materials in the trunk, so you guys know they are heavy. Uh, this is actually heavy. We'll actually stop by and sell these two items to the shirter before they take off. That branding iron is a pretty good weapon. It's just kind of heavy. Um, I could break it down for parts, but... I'm heading over now. They want freaking meds.
Where the hell are you? Did you like fall in the earth or something? Well, we can't trade with this person. That sucks. Okay, so we just got our 50 parts, as you guys seen, from scavenging. Um, now, we're going to have to get that group medicine next episode. I just want to claim this episode, or this outpost, and we'll go deal with them. As long as that mission pops next episode, it might be something different. They might ask for a different resource, but it should pop. Boom. Mission accomplished. The outpost is secure. But I can't help thinking that a bit more effort would be worth spending here. All right. So we got that upgraded or upgrading. It drops us down a little bit on materials. But like I said, we got a bag in the trunk right now. So next episode, like I said, we're going to come over here. We're going to do some looting. Um, we're going to see what we can do for getting our hands on a mechanics tool book or skill book. In this area, it, it might not be the, you know, we might not have good success, but we're going to try. And then if anything, we can even push up here, do some looting in this area, see what we can get our hands on. If not, then we're going to have to um, get ourselves a fuel outpost, which isn't bad. Um, it's actually something I don't mind getting my hands on to begin with. All right, so we are... Outpost is level two. We are now, I think, zeroed out on food completely, right? Yep. So we're not losing nor gaining anything right now. Um, we're just going to stay even. So food is no longer a issue until we grow. If we make our, um, our group bigger, then we will have to deal with it. But yeah, I definitely want to get a mechanic that... Oh, we can actually learn mechanics here if you... Uh, Oh, we can actually do this. I, I forgot all about that. Now, if you guys were saying this last episode, I um I pre-record these, so Yeah. We're actually gonna have a mechanic right now. That is that's really, really cool. I did not know with the auto shop you can just learn mechanics out of that. It's a little expensive. Uh I think it was like we'll we'll check the price on that again before we actually go ahead and do it. But we got we don't have very much influence. But we'll be able to do some cool things if we can get our hands on uh mechanic skill book. So who do I want to be my mechanic first of all? Well let's see how much it costs. Okay, so what does it cost? Hundred parts. That's not too bad. And two hundred influence. Okay, so we'll do it. It's a little expensive. I believe if you do out the outpost, it's only like two hundred and fifty, three hundred influence or something. You don't have to spend parts. But uh it is what it is. So who do we want to be our mechanic? We will go with So we're gonna get a um a weapon handler. Now what weapon handling does is that uh Allows your people to repair guns if they get beat up for free. But you have to wait till the gun is completely broken before they can fix it. Alright, so like I was saying, we're going to go with... We'll do Lily, our, our leader. Alright, so we're going to go over here in person and just learn this skill. I didn't even put Lily in the freaking uh, infirmary. Okay, here we go. Boom. We have a mechanic. We have a mechanic. Alright, so let's swap back to Emily. I'm going to go ahead and put... Uh, We'll throw Lillian in the bed. 
She doesn't really need it all that much, but uh It'll help. So before we end this episode, let's see. So we're good to go there. Uh we have this auto shop. And what we can do at this auto shop is you can craft toolkits, as you guys can see. Uh just need parts. The once we if we specialize her in auto mechanics, um it, it will be even cheaper to craft toolkits and stuff like that. But uh, we have three toolkits right now, so I don't need to worry about crafting another one right now. But what I do want to look at is this. You can craft vehicle upgrade kits. Now, we need an auto mechanic to do this. Um, and they're pretty expensive to do. But this is something that we are going to pursue. I'm not going to tear this down right now. I was Usually I will, but we don't need a uh, garden. We don't need a farm. We don't need anything. The only other thing I'm going to do is... Uh, I want to break this open so we can get the slot because I want to turn this into our trade depot. But right now, um, resources were good, so I do want to keep this around. Um, we also have these cool buffs that you can use for cars. You can make your cars uh, quieter by 30%, and you can make your vehicles more tanky by 30%. So these are also two buffs that you can put on your cars. It, it, it all just works out really, really well. So you can really... Um, double down in your vehicles and when we upgrade our cars uh, We're gonna be putting armor on them and stuff like that. It's a really really cool feature. So uh, We just got to build up our mechanic and I believe by we can level up our mechanic by crafting things like toolkits Yeah, that will improve mechanics um, Those don't improve mechanics you can buy more skill books that will improve the mechanics too I, And I think we may have some stuff in here that will improve mechanics. So if we craft like box mines, that will. Uh, that's craftsman and chemistry mechanics. Yeah. So. Oh, salvaging weapon remains um, improves mechanic skills. GG. Okay, so that that's I mean that that's not something we're gonna be, be able to do consistently, but um, if we actually hit these trailer parks behind us, and the trailer parks up here, um, and some of these sheds and stuff, we we should be able to get a couple our hands on some of those weapon remains, and that might be a a thing we're able to pursue over time. But so far, six out of twenty eight play cards killed, um, resources looking great, survivors are starting to look good. Our skill wise, you know, we're starting to finally level up a bit. Um, weapons, you know, we're, we're, we're not doing bad. I mean, for my standards, you know, we're, we got more than enough guns. Um, other people might not consider this more than enough guns, but you know, we got crossbows we need. Um, I got an AK now. I have an assault rifle on my, like, you know, th those aren't the only guns. All of our people have guns on them. So weapon wise, I feel we're doing really, really well. This is about what you'll expect from lethal zone. You're not going to get, you know, super duper amazing guns all the time, but, uh, we do have our hands on some decent weapons. And facility-wise, you know, I'm going to start upgrading our beds. And we're going to look at maybe getting a couple more people in this base at some point. And, um, yeah. But I do appreciate you guys for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. I Like I said, I'm having a lot of fun playing it. And, uh, yeah, we'll see where this goes from this point. But, again, guys, thank you so much for watching. And, again, I really, really appreciate all the support you guys have been showing me lately. It really means a lot to me. And if you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe. If you like this, please hit that thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.